Hi, this is the third class of data mining with Weka, and in this class we're going to look at some simple machine learning methods and how they work. So we're going to start out emphasizing the message that simple algorithms often work very well. In data mining, maybe in life in general, you should always try simple things before you try more complicated things. And there are many different kinds of simple structure. For example, it might be that one attribute in the data set does all the work. Everything depends on the value of one of the attributes. Or it might be that all of the attributes contribute equally and independently. Or a simple structure might be a decision tree that tests just a few of the attributes. Or you might calculate the distance from a test uh, sample for an unknown sample to the nearest training sample. Or the result might depend on a linear combination of attributes. And we're going to look at uh, all of these simple structures in the next few lessons. There's no universally best learning algorithm. The uh, success of a uh, machine learning method depends on the domain. Data mining really is an experimental science. So we're going to look at now at the 1R rule learner, where one attribute does all the work. It's extremely simple, very trivial actually, but we're going to start with simple things and build up to more complex things. So 1R learns what you might call a one-level decision tree, or a set of rules that all test one particular attribute, a tree that branches only at the root node, depending on the value of a particular attribute, or equivalently, a set of rules that uh, test the value of that particular attribute. So the basic version of 1R, there's one branch for each value of the attribute. We choose which attribute first. Then we make one branch for each possible value of the attribute. Each branch assigns the most frequent class that comes down that branch. And the error rate is the proportion of instances that don't belong to the majority class of their corresponding branch. We choose the attribute with the smallest error rate. Well, let's look at what this actually means. So here's the algorithm. For each attribute, we're going to make some rules. For each value of the attribute, we're going to make a rule that counts how often each class appears, finds the most frequent class, makes the rule assign that most frequent class to this attribute value combination, and then we're going to calculate the error rate of this attribute's rules. And we're going to repeat that for each of the attributes in the data set and choose the attribute with the smallest error rate. Here's the weather data again. So what 1R does is it looks at each attribute in turn, outlook, temperature, humidity, and wind, and forms rules based on that. So for outlook, there are three possible values, sunny, overcast, and rainy. And uh, we just count out of the five sunny instances. Uh, two of them are yeses, and three of them are noes. Is that right? Sunny. No, sunny, no, sunny, no, sunny, yes, sunny, yes. So we're going to choose a, a rule, if it's sunny, then choose no. And we're going to get two errors out of five. For overcast, all of the four overcast values of outlook lead to yes uh, values for the class play. So we're going to choose the rule, if outlook is overcast, then uh, yes giving us zero errors. And finally, for outlook is rainy, we're going to choose yes as well, and that will also give us two errors out of the five instances. So we get a total number of errors if we branch on outlook of four. We can branch on temperature and do the same thing. So uh, when temperature is hot, there are two no's and two yeses. We just choose arbitrarily in the case of a tie. So we'll choose, if it's hot, let's predict no getting two errors. If the temperature is mild, we'll predict yes, getting uh, two out of six errors. And if the temperature is cool, we'll predict yes, getting one out of the uh, four instances as an error. And the same for humidity and wind. So we look at the total error values. We choose the rule with the lowest total error value, either outlook or humidity. That's a tie. So we'll just choose arbitrarily and choose outlook. That's how 1R works. It's as simple as that. 
So let's just try it. Here's Weka. I'm going to open the weather data. The nominal weather data. And uh, I'm going to go to classify. This is such a trivial uh, data set that the results aren't very meaningful. But anyway, if I just run 0R to start off with, I get an error rate of 64%. If I now choose 1R and run that, I get a rule. And the rule I get is if it's branch on Outlook, if it's sunny, then choose No. Overcast, choose Yes. And rainy, choose Yes. We get 10 out of 14 instances correct on the training set. We're evaluating this using cross-validation. It doesn't really make much sense on such a small data set. Interesting, though, that the error rate we get, 42%, is pretty bad, worse than 0R. Actually, with any two-class problem, you could expect to get a success rate of at least 50%. Tossing a coin would give you 50%. So uh, this uh, 1R scheme is not performing very well on this rather trivial data set. Notice that the rule it finally prints out, uh, since we're using cross-validation, tenfold cross-validation, it does the whole thing ten times, and then on the eleventh time it calculates a rule from the entire data set, and that's what it prints out. So uh, that's where this rule comes from. Okay, so one R, one attribute does all the work. This is a very simple method of machine learning, described in 1993, 20 years ago in a paper called Very Simple Classification Rules Perform Well on Most Commonly Used Data Sets by a guy called Rob Halty, who uh, lives in Canada. And he did an experimental evaluation of the 1R method on 16 commonly used data sets. He used cross-validation, just like we've uh, told you, to evaluate these things. And he found that the simple rules from 1R often outperformed far more complex methods that had been proposed for these data sets. So how can such a simple method work so well? Well, some data sets really are simple. And others are so small or noisy or complex that you can't learn anything from them. So it's always worth trying the simplest things first. Section 4.1 of the course text talks about 1R. And now it's time for you to go and do the activity associated with this lesson. Bye for now.